Hi everyone, welcome to this series on energy access innovation, co-sponsored by Energy Catalyst, an Innovate UK program, and ESI Africa. We're joined for this episode by Carlton Cummins, a co-founder and CTO of Acceleron Energy, a Birmingham-based company that is rethinking how batteries can and should be used, or perhaps I should say reused. Carlton. Welcome, and uh, maybe just jump right in. Acceleron is clearly doing something right. Uh, early on, I believe you received a grant, from, uh, grant funding from Energy Catalyst, and you just closed a two million pound round of investment. Um, can you describe what problem Acceleron is solving and what your key of innovation is to do that? Yeah, um, in terms of what problem we're solving at Acceleron, um, while most of the energy storage industry is focused on how do we build uh, batteries at scale for various markets, automotive, renewable energy, um, many other deployments, Acceleron is looking at the question of what's the total life cycle of a battery look like and how do we ensure that the technology we create today doesn't become a significant waste problem tomorrow. So what we've done is that we've developed battery packs for stationary applications, which are designed for reuse, repair, and recycling. So what that means in practical terms is that we've made a battery which can be repaired, upgraded, and easily recycled as it goes through its life cycle. Whereas a typical battery is produced, then used, and then it needs to be disposed. Most of them haven't really given much thought to what the disposal needs to look like. How do you make it easy to dispose? How do you reduce the risk when transporting it when it needs to be disposed? And in emerging markets where energy storage is becoming a really big thing, lithium energy storage in particular, we believe that that's a really important thing to think about. What does the life cycle of this product look like? So we've developed sustainable batteries that are designed from the very beginning to be easily repaired in country easy to recycle in many of these emerging markets and really easy to upcycle and all the other things with as well. Interesting. And just to follow up on that, are you doing that uh, on a localized basis or is there some sort of centralized uh, operations that, that, that uh, achieves that end? Really good question. So the, the nuts and bolts of that is first we've designed a battery pack that is really easy to disassemble with a lot of existing tools. So most people uh, in most countries have a lot of fastening equipment, you know, the automotive industry for repair shops, etc. Everybody's used to fasteners and nuts and bolts, etc. So instead of using a building a battery that requires a lot of complex automated equipment to disassemble it, we've designed it to use a lot of equipment that can be disassembled even with hand tools that makes it a lot far more accessible for it to be done in many markets. The other thing we've done is that we've applied what I guess we'd call a global local model when it comes to repair, reuse and recycling of our products. And what I mean by that is that we use a global supply chain to make the product initially. The product is made affordably from, from you know, wherever it can be made in, in different parts of the world. We then train our distributors in the countries to do the repair, the reuse, and this recycling in country. So if we use Kenya, for example, because we have a, a bit of a hub there in Kenya, we have batteries that are repaired in Kenya by guys in Kenya for the Kenyan market. Because we believe that that's the model for reuse and recycling that makes the most sense. If you need to spend money to air freight the broken battery back to the UK or wherever it was made, and then we need to send it back to you, it's not really efficient so we decided that it makes sense to make sure we empower the local markets and the regional markets with the ability to maintain their products and i must say this is not a new model if you think about the automotive industry when your car breaks down you don't call said manufacturer you speak with your dealer the dealer has been equipped with all of the tools to maintain and, and manage that relationship with you when it comes to supporting the product um, batteries have been treated, unfortunately, a lot like consumer electronics. As a result, the idea is that you're just supposed to use it, it gets thrown away at some point, and then you buy a new one. No one has really been thinking about that full relationship. 
Yeah, a very disruptive uh, idea. Common sense, but uh, very disruptive. So you mentioned Kenya. Um, I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about why this innovation uh, from Acceleron is meaningful to Africa as a whole. Uh, and if you can also just sort of comment on specifically what that impact might be around the energy access space. So Africa um, is making a bit of a trend for itself. It's, it's quite a novel trend as well, where it's been, it's kind of been the leapfrog kid for a couple of years when it comes to certain technologies. Uh, some examples of that would be how Africa has leapfrogged the landline and it just went straight to the mobile phone. It's leapfrogged the conventional banking system and it's just went straight to mobile banking. So what we're seeing as well is it, they're starting to occur a leapfrog with the deployment of conventional energy infrastructure, putting up poles, running power lines, putting it into villages, connecting all the villages to the power lines, setting up centralized power distribution networks, you know, power plants. What they're doing instead is solar panels, batteries to your house. And many companies are doing that. And it's called uh, a decentralized model for the distribution of energy, which in many, in many terms makes a lot of sense because if you've got a lot of remote areas, it's very cost prohibitive to build physical infrastructure the old way to go to them. The liberating element that batteries have introduced in this is that you can take technology to the consumer. And that has really changed the game when it has come to bringing energy to a lot of remote areas and really bolstering that uh, social economic mobility in these areas. The element that our batteries, lithium-ion batteries, have to play in this is that previously we were using a lot of lead-acid batteries for that. They were cheap, they were understood. Problem is they don't last as long as you would like when you're powering your house by lead-acid batteries. So lithium-ion batteries have that staying power. They also have the ability to be a lot lighter, so getting them to people is a lot more affordable. But when you have them, when they eventually die, they create some really messy waste problems. Because they, they're usually classed as hazardous material. They are a lot more complicated when it comes to recycling with the conventional way they're assembled. And that makes it really difficult to deal with this problem, which ultimately will happen because everything dies of managing the waste. So our innovation that we plugged it kind of just facilitated what was already going on, where we made a battery, that they, a lithium ion battery, that provides all of the features that they already like, that they know can repair it, recycle it, and maintain it in country using their own uh, resources in terms of labor, as well as um, when it comes to capacity building. And it's, uh, where are you currently operating in Africa, besides Kenya? So currently we're in Kenya. Um, we're about to make some moves into Rwanda. I'm very keen to explore some other uh, markets and opportunities. Um, so always uh, happy to have a discussion with any persons that are interested in reaching out to us. And this is strategic because Acceleron likes to move into markets where we have a strategic partner. We know our technology, but we look for partners that know their customers, know their markets. So how this typically works is that we provide you with a battery for a product that you supply to your end user. We, we don't have a direct interaction with your end user. We leave the distributors to maintain that relationship. We support the distributor in maintaining our product. So that's the reason why we currently based in Kenya. We, we had a really good relationship with a the distributor there. Um, they have a really good market reach in Kenya and a few other countries. Hence why we're now moving with them to Rwanda as well. And we are really excited to, to kind of engage with some other distributors with our sustainable battery technology. I, I must make a note as well that sustainability is not just about uh, improving the, the efficiency of how we use materials on the planet, which is important because we live on a rock with limited resources. It's also about reducing the total cost of ownership. If you can maintain and repair those batteries in country, it's far more affordable than having to replace entire units or entire fleets of batteries. Just imagine you've got hundreds of thousands of customers and you need to replace all of their batteries every couple of years. 
is far more affordable if they can be easily and cost efficiently maintained in country using labor within that country. Interesting. So um, you talked about your distribution, but who is your customer? And you know, assuming this is a disruption, a disruptive model that you, Acceleron is is come forward with. Uh, so you, um, I'm curious. The, the legacy solution of customers that you're now going after or already serving, what, what, are you, what are you doing better for them that makes them want to use Acceleron's solution? What, how are you replacing what the legacy model was? So our customer, I would probably break this into two. So you've got uh, two distinctions here. You've got the customer, or as we like to call them our client, they provide the service to the end user who is ultimately the person who uses that battery. So if I kick you on a user journey, starting with the person using the battery, you've got someone in the villages, let's say they, they work somewhere remote, they live somewhere remotely, but they work somewhere in, in the city. They would buy a, a home solar kit from a company that operates somewhere in the city that comes and installs solar panel and a battery and a kit that allows them to run lights, um, a TV, maybe a radio, even power a laptop. All of that is one kit, and most of the time people will buy that day as you go. Oh, you understand that. But our customer is that company that just supplied them with the technology. Where instead of that company who owns that asset or who has leased that asset to them, having to replace the battery whenever it breaks, we provide them with the support to be able to have a battery that was designed for servicing. We've also built intelligence into the product so that we can let them know when a service intervention needs to occur. And the other attractive thing about it is that we've also given them the ability to upgrade the battery as new technology becomes available. So our customer is usually the client that provides the service. There's another customer that we've recently been having, which is a really interesting one as well. This customer, is the companies that have been kind of um, growing up right now in, in Kenya and some of the other African countries, which are the electronic waste management companies, where they basically, when the electronics die, they take all of these electronics from a lot of these companies that supply these kits and the solar lamps and the, the solar home powering kits, etc. When they die, they take the waste and they then manage where the waste goes the plastics go here for reuse and the metals go there for reprocessing and the the sticking point they had had was the batteries which normally had to be accumulated and then sent to shipping uh, for processing in europe for recycling which was costly and the emissions involved in that is quite high we've recently formed a relationship with one of them where we have deployed our technology to identify the used batteries that are viable for reuse using our technology. So we have deployed um, some equipment there to test the used batteries, identify the good ones, and then we use our sustainable battery hardware to repackage those used components into an Acceleron product, which is then redeployed into the market. So that battery was made from waste in Kenya, processed in Kenya by guys in Kenya for reuse in Kenya. So it's a nice little loop that we created there recently with that new type of customer. Fascinating. That's very exciting to hear about the new applications uh, for you know, really strengthening the circular economy uh, and to do it locally. So I, I, I can't wait to see how that evolves. So one last question for you. Um, you know, you've been working uh, in Africa for quite some time. Obviously, it's a, a huge number of, of countries, uh, so you can't talk about it as a, as a you know, monolith, right? It's, it's very different. But I'm curious, just from your own market segment perspective, from the battery recycling or sort of modularized uh, battery approach uh, that you're taking, what's the next frontier? I mean, you're, you're an innovation company, right? So clearly, you're, you have a, a roadmap for how you want to move forward i'm wondering if you could talk just a little bit about that uh before we end up yeah definitely so the next frontier of innovation we see for the market in africa um i'll speak probably a little bit about the legacy technology you've had fossil fuel 
powering um, in the earlier times, powering the home, providing lighting, etc., as well as providing uh, energy for mobility. Uh, that's the the cars, the motorcycles, the scooters, most of them operate on fossil fuels today. We see an opportunity for the lithium ion battery to replace and completely supplant the jerry can. So what we see in the future is our sustainable battery technology being able to power the home, being able to power mobility in Africa, being able to power lots of elements of people's lives in Africa, um, completely or significantly reducing the need for fossil fuel. And it's not to, to kind of put a stain on fossil fuel as a bad technology. It's just that we see a future where it becomes less necessary to rely on fossil fuel for certain applications. It will still have its importance in the world, but we see lithium ion batteries playing a major role in supplanting it in some areas. And that's the reason why we see sustainable, reusable, repairable batteries playing a major role. Because just imagine you have an ecosystem where you can buy a battery, uh, a lithium jerry can, let's call it, that powers your home. You can take that out when you leave home, put it into your scooter or something like that. There's a hub in the city that manages and maintains those batteries for you. So you could do a battery swap or you can get some maintenance done on that battery as well, all within the ecosystem of that country. And we think that that's really exciting. We think it's a really responsible way to move forward in the future, where you're not just thinking about the beginning of the product, you're thinking about the maintenance in the middle, and you're also thinking about the end of life of the product or that country. So you see uh, basically the movement towards 100% electrification uh, at some point. I'm wondering what's what's the time frame for that? Do you think? I think I think it probably may take a decade to, to really significantly uh, make an impact. But again, I'll say this: um, Africa has has proven itself to be the leapfrog kid. So I wouldn't be surprised if if they're able to do it in, in a lot faster. The thing that Africa has that a lot of nations don't is that they're not pigeon held to legacy technology like other, other nations are. So they can make some of those bold moves that other people are a little more squeamish about, a little more uncomfortable about because they're tied uh, for several reasons to legacy technology. I love that, the leapfrog kid. Um, okay, one last question, I, I lied. Um, how, is this a job creator uh, for countries in Africa? Well, that's the exciting thing about it, where people often see technology as being intrusive. Technology that is not thought well of or thought of comprehensively can be intrusive. But when you really think about sustainable technology, circular technology, it is a massive job creator because you're talking about a new product that relies on distribution within the country, it's maintained within the country, it's upgraded within the country, it is even leveraged to do reuse within the country. Like our product right now, so I give a, a practical scenario. We have a battery hardware where we make packs for solar energy storage. We can use new components. Those components assemble to make a solar battery that powers house the same technology is maintained as that battery ages throughout the 20 years that the solar panels will last in the country not shipped back to us they're not buying a new battery we've given them the ability to maintain it there that battery the same hardware you can use used components from within that country to repurpose existing waste so you can see you've got interesting opportunities cropping up all over the place because you've thought of the total life cycle of the product as opposed to the conventional model of thinking unfortunately which is a linear model you produce it you use it and then you throw it away i'm not knocking the model when it comes to the linear model it had its place in the world it was excellent for getting us up off our butt and making stuff but we're now at the stage where we're getting so good at making stuff we need to start thinking about what happens to it when we stop using it. Great. Thanks so much, Carlton. I'm really looking forward to see how the company evolves. And for those watching, uh, be sure to look out for the next episode of our Energy Access Innovators series. 
sponsored by Energy Catalyst and ESI Africa. Thanks so much. No problem.